I've been getting a lot of requests for information lately on how to color calibrate monitors. Now, I'm not a big fan of many of those cheaper color calibration tools that are out there. And by cheaper, I mean tools ranging anywhere from a couple hundred to about a thousand dollars. I've tried some of them and found the results questionable. And without knowing exactly what the measurement standards and techniques are, I, I'm just not inclined to trust them. I remember one that I tried wanted me to really dim my monitor and then began its calibration. And I'm well aware that the ability of a monitor to produce color has a lot to do with the range of brightness by which it can illuminate its red, green, and blue pixels. After all, monitors produce color by how they mix up those red, green, and blue pixels. And that depends very much on how much they're illuminated. So if the brightness is restricted, so is its color range. Another one of the cheaper colorometers that I tried Claim to function in a wide gamut of color ranges, such as the Display P3 color range, which I use. But after getting it, I found its results to be weird. So I looked it up, and apparently it actually only tested in sRGB. So, long story short, I'm just not inclined to trust the cheap colorometers. The higher quality and more expensive colorometers and photometers, like the CR100, produced by Colorometry Research, sure, I trust those. Because, among other things, they're very transparent about their methods. But... As I don't have five to $10,000 for that kind of technology, and since I come from a very practical photography background, where you learn to make do with what you have and jury rig what you don't, over the years, I've adopted some very simple and straightforward methods for color calibrating screens. Now, this isn't an actual color calibration done with the machine, so everyone is gonna be perfectly like the next one, but these methods, as they say, are good enough for government work. Now, before you apply any color balancing method, it's very important that you make sure that your monitor is not set on any weird modes that might affect color, such as one of those night modes that's supposed to reduce eye strain or gaming mode, which often emphasizes saturation because those will do odd things to your color. You want the monitor set at its normal setting or whatever setting gives it its fullest range of color. The first method is very simple and it just involves getting a good white balance. To do it, all you need to do is get hold of some ordinary sheets of paper. Take a small stack of them, five to 10 sheets of paper, enough so that the stack is relatively opaque so light shining from behind won't show through. This is going to establish a white reference point for you. We want to get as close as possible to the D65 white reference point, which is an industry standard. Some paper manufacturers might note on their paper that they're aiming for that kind of white. You wouldn't want to use a white paper that says it's creamy white or off white or some other kind of white. You want the standard D65 white. The next thing you'll need to do is have daylight temperature light. So there's a couple ways you can attain that. Some manufacturers make light bulbs that emulate daylight, and there are photography lights that also emulate daylight. If you happen to have either of those, you can use those. But the best method is if your monitor happens to be near a window, especially if the window is an oblique angle, so you can illuminate only the paper, not the monitor. Then open the curtains and use the window light to illuminate the paper. Now you need a white screen on your monitor. There's a lot of ways to get that. The way I do it is I just open Affinity Photo, set it to open a new 4K document, and make sure the color space is display P3, which is my preferred color space. And I also make sure that I'm working in 16-bit color, and then open the document. If we look up here on the right, you'll see that the red, green, and blue are each listed at 255, showing true white or pure white. Then I'll just open the color sliders on my monitor and adjust the color sliders until the white on the screen matches the white of the paper. What you're trying to do is watch to see if the white has any leaning toward red, green, or blue, and you would want to remove that. You want the white to be neutral, just like the white of the paper. And here are a few quick tips to help you accomplish that. As noted before, be sure that you are using daylight to illuminate the paper. Our perception of white is heavily influenced by the color temperature of the light. So if you're using artificial light, be sure it emulates daylight. And if you're using natural light, be sure that it's the natural light from a clear day. This is because weather conditions can also influence the color of daylight. Sun up and sundown can warm the color temperature of light and heavily clouded conditions can cool it. Another tip is to take your time making these adjustments. Make very small adjustments, one or two points at a time, and give your eyes a moment to adjust to each change. The differences you're looking for can be very subtle. And it can be useful even to get up, take a break for a few minutes, then come back and look at your whites and make another comparison with fresh eyes. Also, never adjust more than two of the three color channels. 
That way, one of the color channels is working as a standard. If you start messing with all three color channels at the same time, odds are pretty high you're going to end up making some pretty wild color changes. And if you actually have to make changes to all three color channels, it probably means something's wrong, really wrong, with the color of your monitor. You may want to get another monitor. Finally, only move the color slider bars down from whatever the default position is. I'm not sure why this is, it's just a standard I was always taught to go by. But my guess is that it relates to the way color monitors produce color. They show us red, green, and blue pixels and change their brightness so that we perceive different colors. If we brighten one or two channels of color, it forces the entire color range into a brighter space, which may wash it out some. However, I freely admit that that's just a guess. If you happen to actually know, please let me know. I'm really curious to know. I've looked it up and can't find the answer anywhere. Now, while this is a serviceable way of getting a quick and dirty color balance, there's another way of doing it that I like even better. You're just going to need some kind of Apple device, an iPhone or an iPad. Many people do these days, so this may be more convenient for you. You see, independence industry testing has shown that Apple does a great job color calibrating their devices. And iDevices, of the sixth generation or later, right out of the box, tend to be nearly 100% color accurate, almost all the time. This makes them great tools to serve as a standard of color reference for color adjusting a monitor. So if you have such a device, you can use it in a photograph to color balance your monitor. Now, of course, there's nothing stopping you from using another device for the next calibration method, such as an Android device. But you would need to know if it's color accurate. If it's not color accurate, it's not going to do you any good to try to calibrate your monitor against it. There are numerous websites, such as DisplayMate Technologies, that report on the color accuracy of such devices. So you can check with them and hopefully your device is listed there and that'll give you a good idea of whether or not you can use it. If it's not there, well, it's generally always safe using an eye device. And you can get an old one going back to the sixth generation use pretty cheap these days. A new device should be a bit more accurate, especially if it uses an OLED panel, because OLED panels are known for developing some color infidelity over time. But older devices, particularly if they use IPS or VA panels, should remain color accurate for many years. And do bear in mind, like I said, this is a technique that's, as they say, good enough for government work. For your typical user, methods like these are just fine for color balancing a monitor. Honestly, I think you only need an expensive color calibration tool should you be doing professional work, and not many of us need that degree of accuracy. All right, let's jump into the next method. It's very easy and produces uniformly good, reliable results across many types of devices and monitors. Place an image on your computer monitor and your iPad or your iPhone that has a good blend of white, red, green, and blue in it. I'm just using an image of Termella mesenterica, otherwise known as witch's butter, that orange fungus in the foreground and further up to the top center in the background, that I photographed a couple autumns ago. This is like nature's tofu, a flavorless edible mushroom that's very common and I harvest it most years. It's quite colorful though, quite pretty, it turns up in late summer when the nights are getting cold and wet. And the strong orange to orange red colors, the green of the plants in the background to the upper left, and the white of the birch and the various lichens on it make this a good image to work with. What this image is lacking is some good strong blue, but if we can get the other colors balanced, then the blue should show up. Plus, we can double check and rebalance for blue by using another photo, which we'll do in a moment. This is how the image appears on my Odyssey monitor. Now, if we zoom back so we can also see how the image appears on my iPad, we can see that the Odyssey monitor is a bit color imbalanced compared to the iPad. The monitor is either portraying the red a little too strongly or the green a little too weakly. Let's turn on the monitor settings and see what's going on. Since the red, green, and blue settings are at default 50, but my red is too strong, I need to turn the red down till I balance the color. I'll start knocking the red down one small point at a time. Pulling back just three points on the red, color balance the monitor's image with the iPad's image, with the iPad serving as the standard of reference. Notice that, as with the white balancing trick that I used just before, I only make adjustments downward from the default position of the slider bars, in this case taking the red from 50 to 47. That was enough to color correct this monitor, but had I needed to make more adjustments, I would only have adjusted one of the other slider bars. I would never have moved all three slider bars because one of them always needs to serve as a standard of reference. If you start moving all three slider bars around, you'll get some pretty wild color adjustments. 
But anybody with OK Color Vision should be able to do this kind of color adjustment. And the beauty of this is, you can color adjust all your monitors and devices this way so that they will all present roughly the same image. I say roughly because no matter what you do, one monitor will produce its image slightly different from the next monitor, just due to differences in how they're made. Even two monitors of the same make and model will produce slightly different images. So our goal is to balance them around a standard of reference, and iDevices, iPads, and iPhones, which tend to be excellently factory calibrated, provide such a standard of reference. And this means that all of your images will look more or less the same on all of your monitors, all of your devices, and the monitors and devices that anybody else is using to look at them too. Now, as noted earlier, the weakness of this image is that it lacks blue. A good image is going to offer strong greens, strong reds, and strong blues because those are your primary colors, as well as some strong whites to serve as a white balance reference. Now that the monitor is balanced with the iPad, let me put up another one of my images that offers strong blues on both the devices. This is the big road that leads to my backwards homestead during rush hour. And this image offers us some nice strong blues high above in the sky. It also gives us some orange reds in the trees and the clouds, and some greens, though they're dark, among the evergreens. There's even a bit of a white reference in the very bright water that's on the dirt road right now. I don't think this is really ideal for color balancing because the color should be nice and bright, but let's pretend it's all I have available. And as you can see, the blue color between the iPad and the monitor is now well balanced. Since the presentation of red, green, and blue are closely related, color balancing the red and the green in the previous image and being able to double check the whites on the birch ensures that the presentation of blues will match as well. Though of course it would be better had it worked from the outset with a single image with good strong red, greens, blues, and whites in it. That's always best. But I went about things this way to show that you don't absolutely have to have that. It is okay to jury rig things and it often produces great results. And there you go, two cheap, easy, quick, and effective ways to calibrate, or perhaps I should say color balance, all of your monitors and various devices. Go ahead and give it a try. Many photographers use these methods and they work. If you have any thoughts or observations, please leave them in the comments section below. Now, I hope you do some amazing astrophotography while you're getting out there to shoot that marvelous sky.